Oops, have to get to work. Hagasen hurries out of the shop. What? Where's he going to work? He's going to fucking... He's gonna fucking sell that ass in the street corner? Is that what he's talking about? Where's he going? Hi guys, I just want to take a second to thank all my patrons here who have donated to me. No matter how much they've donated to me, it really means a lot to me. And if you guys want, you can check out my Patreon and help support me continue to make yaoi videos. Thanks guys. Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Dramatical Murder. In the last episode, Alba was starting to build up a tolerance to the heroin that Ty I prescribed him and um, now he's saying huh and I'm not quite sure why but let's find out Kojoku's not here neither is Ren I thought that was the case at first but then I found the door leading to the ver veranda slightly open When I look out over out, out at the veranda, I see Kojaku leaning on the handrail. He looks down at the nightlife with a calm expression. He holds a thin a thin cigarette between his fingers while white smoke escapes from his slightly narrowed lips. Kojaku would never smoke in my room. For some reason he would only ever do it out on the veranda. Well yeah, I hope he never fucking smokes in your room. This smoke damage is gonna ruin the value of your property. He doesn't smoke in front of girls, or during work, or even when he's at the bar, he only smokes here. And literally, smokers are so gross. <laughs> so gross, guys. Like, this is this is why we can't be with you, Kojaku, you're nasty. I don't know the reason, but maybe he feels like he can actually relax here. Kojaku would never show such a dim expression outside, he's always confidently smiling, that's how he presents himself. He seems like he's usually having fun with women, but I wonder if that itself is unexpectedly exhausting. Kojaku's hand carries the cigarette to his lips. In the dark, his fingers look extremely long and beautiful. His hair, he does his hair every day, so he should be skillful with his fingers. They look bony and masculine, it's strange that I find them beautiful. Kojaku holds Ren who has Benny on his head, both of them seem to be in sleep mode. I'm afraid that they'll fall off the handrail, but I trust Kojaku to hold on to them. I pick the ashtray in my room and open the door to the veranda. Hmm. Kojaku's absent-minded eyes catch me and lose a smile, and a loose smile appears on his mouth. Yo, finished with the bath? I thought you were in the living room. Ah, felt like a little of this. Kojaku lightly raises the hand holding a cigarette. You fucking black lung, you're disgusting. You really like it here, don't you? Really? Maybe. Even though you can't see anything. I guess, but does it really matter if you can see anything or not? Does it? I don't really get you sometimes. Kojaku exhale and laughs unexpectedly. Here. I hold out the ashtray and he puts the shortened cigarette into it. I lower it next to my feet and lean on the handrail next to him. Uh, ah. As soon as Kojaku sees me next to him, he frowns. Alba, not again. Hmm? Your hair. I keep saying you have to dry it a little better. Kojaku reaches out towards me. Is he going to touch my hair? I flinch back reflexively, but instead of catching my hair, he grabs my nose. k go Really? With the line of work I'm in, I can't help but care about your hair. So stop it! When I shake my head to escape, Kojaku smiles happily. Your hair has grown a lot. Are you still cutting it on your own every once in a while? A, a little, yeah. I don't want to have to see a professional. Doing it myself is enough. Well, it's not that bad. Everything seems to be in the right place. R really? Kya, Kojaku-san complimented me. I'm so totally happy. Why the sarcastic tone? An imitation of your fans. Oh, you. So that's why Alba's hair looks so trashy. <laughs> he cuts it himself. <laughs> His hair is a mess, guys. Kojaku chuckles. I won't let anyone snip my hair for a reason. Ever since I was born, there's been a sense of feeling in my hair. That's why cutting my hair with scissors hurts, so I don't do it. 
Although below the shoulders, the feeling becomes blunt, so I can snip there somehow. Ever since I was a kid, I was teased that I looked like a girl because of it. Since I could also feel it when it was being touched, they would pull on my hair as a joke. It was hell. They bullied me because they thought it was funny, but when they did, Kojaku always saved me. Though it seems Kojaku thought I was a girl in the beginning. When he found out I was a boy, he was considerably surprised. But Kojaku's attitude didn't change after that. He still wanted to fuck me. And I was pretty happy about it, too. You have such... such a beautiful hair. No. You have such beautiful hair. You have to take good care of it. I've always thought so, but you say that so often and so easily. That hasn't changed about you from the old days. Yeah, I know my hair is pretty fab. It isn't. Look at... it's honestly bad, guys. Look at it. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> I only say it because I mean it, and you used to be so bashfully happy when I complimented you. Kojoku makes an overly dramatic glance off into the distance, and I throw him another glare. That's when I was a kid, I don't remember. I wipe my wet hair, and a blunt plane, a bu a blunt plane runs all the way down to my shoulders. O ow. This pain, it's, is it still what happened from Rhyme? Wh what's the matter? No, it's nothing. It doesn't look like it's nothing. Come to think of it, you looked pretty tired a while ago, too. Ah! What is it? No need to go putting up a front. It... it's not like that. What should I do? Should I tell Kojaku about Rhyme? A little bit of hesitation pops up. In these kinds of situations, Kojaku has a strangely sharp sense of intuition. He's already watching with doubtful eyes. Even if I try to lie now, he won't buy it. Well, about today, I had a strange experience. Well, how should I say this? Like I was pulled into rhyme. Pulled into rhyme? It happened suddenly. I was on a delivery, and before I knew it, I was standing on a rhyme field. You're not talking about a dream, right? No. So in other words, wait, is that even possible? I didn't really get it either, but it was close to your territory, that narrow alley there. I haven't heard anything like that before. There were some other strange things too. Usui wasn't there either. That's strange. It's responsible for holding rhyme games, right? That strange device appears with it and all. Isn't it? And... I tell Kojaku about the rabbit head. I also include the fact that he knew my name. After earnestly listening to my story, Kojaku groans. What he did to you, was it... Wasn't it like a drive-by? Yeah, it really took you a long time to put that together, dumbass. A, a drive-by? Wow, you, you think it could have been a drive-by? Wow, you're such a genius. Like, I guess I'm not the genius anymore with the fucking brain capacity of like a thousand fucking regular men. I guess it's you, Kojaku. You're really a good detective. I've only heard this from my... F from my teammates, and I don't know the details, but there seems to be guys who are able to set up a rhyme game without Usui. Because their rhyme games don't have rules or limits, there seem to be cases where the pulled in opponents are left half dead. Then, was my opponent one of those drive buyers too? There's the possibility, however, it makes me sick. Well, what does that mean? I'm relieved that you managed to escape this time. But what happens if you get pulled in again? Wouldn't that be extremely dangerous? But I haven't even done rhymes, so why did he mistake me for someone else? There's also the possibility they didn't care who he challenged, or it might have been someone who held a grudge against you. No way, I I'm not you. <laughs> How cruel, but he knew your name, right? Well, that's right. Kojaku? Kojaku keeps silent with a troubled face. After a while, I hear a small sigh. Sorry, I think I'll just go home for today. I remembered I have something to do. Oh, okay, I see. Kojaku pushes off from the handrail and stands in front of me. Are you really okay? Yeah. I'll believe you then. If something happens, tell me right away. Okay, can you can you get your face away from me? You, your breath smells just as bad as that woman from the post office. I mean, you were just fucking smoking. Why are you breathing in my face, asshole? I, I know. Good. Kojaku smiles at our agreement and gently hands Ren over to me. 
He then picks up Benny, who is resting on Ren's head, and puts him in his pocket. See ya. Good night. He, yeah. Kojoku raises his hand in farewell and leaves the room. I shut the door leading to the veranda and return to the room, lower, lower Ren to the bed and lay down next to him. R rhyme, huh? Did I encounter a drive-by or after all? When it happened, Ren appeared in his online form. He also fought according to my instructions. Something set. What was it? During the rhyme, my mouth moved on its own like somebody had taken over my body. What was that? With that feeling, I feel like I know it. I don't know why I think so, but it's like... It resembled a feeling that I have when I invite customers to the store. That feeling when I know... When I know what to say to make others do what I want. Have drive buyers always appeared so frequently? Let's do a little research. Although I don't want to get involved too deeply. A message. The latest Allmate models, huh? It was a direct message. New Allmates appear at one after another. I briefly look over the contents and close the coil screen. I've always been so attached to things that I never want to give up, that I never want to give them up, but not everyone is like that. That's right. I have to check Ren's condition. I'm worried about the damage he took in Rhyme. <laughs> We've definitely forgot about him all fucking day. I get up and and reseat myself in the bed, put the blue lump on my knees, and and start him up. Alba. Good morning. It's not morning. Good morning. I'll examine you a bit now. It's not morning. <laughs> because Ren is an old model, restoration would be trouble if full-scale malfunction appeared. He has to be frequently maintained and checked. I hold a long cable starting from the desktop computer and push aside Ren's neck f r push aside Ren's neck fur to connect the cable to the port. I thought we didn't even need desktop computers anymore with coil. I start up a touch browser with Coil, and the interface that supervises Ren's engine is displayed. Hmm, maybe the reaction speed of the reflections decreased a bit. I grab a toolbox that I've thrown on the floor, remove the lid, and take out a 10 centimeter square screwdriver, and push aside Ren's fur again. Although all mates can fundamentally be fixed through the touch browser's control panel, Ren is an old model and I need to look inside of him too. I take a stock of new chips out of the toolbox and use tweezers to replace Ren's old chip with a new one. This should be enough. I close the lid and control panel, remove the cable, and lift Ren into my arms. Aww. Aww, doesn't he just look so cute? Like, like we're just ready to fucking, like we're just ready to fucking kiss this beautiful fucking, the dog, right? Shouldn't we just place our lips right on him? Right on those lips? I mean, he's a machine! It's not- it's not bestiality. He's a machine, guys. I think we could. I think we should. <laughs> okay. How, how- how is it? Any place you're not feeling well? What's going on? Oh, I pressed space. Hmm? There's some sense of incongruity. I mean, no. <laughs> There's some sense of incongruity, however, it's within the allowable range. I see. Well, I only changed the chip. Tell me right away if any malfunction appears. Understood. I stroke Ren's back as he answers me, and I place my forehead to his tiny one. I forget how long it's been since we started to do this, but I make sure to do this every time I do maintenance on Ren. It's like a charm. Thank you, as always. The pleasure is mine. I'll count on you in the future, too. The pleasure is mine. Wait, I don't even know who was talking now. <laughs> Maybe the, that was reversed. You always answer like that. Is it strange? No, not at all. I think it suits you, so it's good. I wonder if I should thank you for that remark. You should, I was complimenting you. Thank you. <laughs> the pleasure is mine. I put our foreheads together one more time and lower Ren to the bed. Ren is always the same no matter what. He'll be by my side. 
After that, I place my tools in order and leisurely spend time talking with Ren about everything. Good morning! Good morning! The next day, when I go to work at Haybon as usual, Hagasan is organizing the stock. I leave my bag behind the counter and put Ren down before going over to Hagasan immediately. I have to properly apologize for yesterday. But boss y yes I'm sorry about yesterday's delivery. Uh, uh, no, 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 don't worry about it anymore. As he says that, his expression clouds. I'm surprised to see him do that. But maybe after I lost the package, he was yelled at by the customer. If so, then it's my fault. Um, I'm really sorry. I'd like to apologize to the customer too, if possible. Oh yes, about that. Oh fuck, what? 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 <laughs> why, is, why is the music stop? What What are you going to tell us about the customer? Hagasan pushes up his glasses with a troubled face. It actually turns out the customer had passed away yesterday. I mean, literally, is that what's going to happen? We don't even know who that person is. Since yesterday's delivery was done with prepayment, I wanted to ask if he wanted a refund or a redelivery, and tried to contact him in various ways. I even tried to contact the control center, but it was completely useless. Y useless? Yes, I couldn't contact him at all. Since the sender and recipient were the same, I tried checking the address, but a person with a completely different name lived there. And he said he didn't remember ordering any goods. In other words, was it a prank? It's very likely, but I don't know why anyone would do such a thing. Well, free money. <laughs> I don't I don't poke my nose where it doesn't belong. Maybe. Even if I suggest it's a prank, it was already paid, and it would only be a loss for the other party. Why would anyone do something like that? I tilt my head together with Hagasan. It's fine as is, but it doesn't feel right. Yeah. More importantly, I was pulled into Rhyme during that delivery. Could that have been... Could, could the person who pulled me into Rhyme have been the one who scheduled the delivery? Jesus. This goes deeper than I thought. Suspicions drift through the air, and it suddenly becomes time to open shop. Oops, have to get to work. Hagasan hurries out of the shop. What? Where's he going to work? He's going to fucking he's gonna fucking sell that ass in the street corner? Is that what he's talking about? Where's he going? <laughs> I feel somewhat unpleasant, and no matter how hard I try to think about it, I don't understand it, so I'll have to give up for now. Alright, I have some work to do too. I decide to change into my change my mood and return to the counter. Oops. I always want to press the space bar to skip dialogue. The morning passes with no incidents in particular, and after finishing lunch break, the afternoon shift starts. Since Hagasan went out, I'm the only one in the shop. Yes, yes, well then, we look forward to hearing from you again. After finishing an incoming call from a customer, I take a breather. Since he reacted to my voice with the usual pattern, I was able to sell just as many things. It seemed like he was one of those who had called before, and he was reluctant to hang up the phone, so it was a little troublesome. While I feel disgusted by the excited voice that still lingers in my ears, the doorbell rings. Oh, a customer? I take my elbow off the counter and straighten myself up. Hiya, Alba! Alba, we came to play! Hmm. It's you guys. I thought it was a customer, but the only ones that come in are the evil Brad and siblings. I let out an exaggerated sigh rest my elbow on the counter again and give the kids a sharp glare and why the hell is that eight-year-old girl wearing a fucking crop top <laughs> what the hell is going on in the future <laughs> and frankly the rest of these kids are wearing ridiculous outfits too what is going on this future is just so grim <laughs> whenever they come in it always spells bad news you just came to do stupid stuff again go home already Alba, you're annoying. Annoying! You just stay quiet now, alright? Those brats. 
the brats find Bonjin kind of immediately start chasing him. Ah! There he is! Well, wait up! Catch it! C cleaning! The confused Bonjin Kun quickly moves to escape. Bonjin Kun is quite clever for an all mate, so he can move unexpectedly fast, and his evasion ability is also high. It's not so easy to catch him, but that's probably what keeps the brats chasing after him anyway. Hey, 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 hey! Don't run! Ah, come on! Wait! Catch it already! Come on! C cleaning! Cleaning! Wait, no. Well, that was cleaning? Cleaning! I don't even know. Ah, oh, the shelf is wobbling now. That cardboard looks like it's about to fall. It should be fine to just to just stop this by force. I just go over there and whack these children on the fucking ass. I thought I could, but I'm one step too late. Ah! Uh, ah! Uh. No way! Something broke. It broke. Don't don't you? It broke me. You brats. Wow, Alba got angry! Angry! I hate quick-tempered men! Shut up! Hey, you! Hey, you too! I catch a trio by their necks and drag them to the door and throw them out. Wah! Ouch! H how cruel! You're awful! Shut up! Shut up! When you make an adult angry, it can get scary! I put my hands on my hips and make an intimidating teacher pose while glaring at their br at the brats. Jeez, you're always causing trouble. Try reflecting a little and go home already. <laughs> They're kids. What do you mean reflecting? So annoying. Shut up, stupid. Stupid Alba. You're so lame, you old geezer. You little. Just listen to me already. Wow! The instant I finally snap and yell at them, the brats make a break for it. Aw, oh, damn it. Even I don't think I'm all that popular, but if those kids just had the capacity for even a tiny bit of cute in them. And now I have to clean the mess they left. Sheesh. Hmm? What? I thought I heard something just now. Wh whoa! What the fuck? <laughs> What's going on? Oh, is that clear? So, something just fell all of a sudden. What, what fell from the sky was apparently a person. And for some reason he's wearing a gas mask. What the hell? But a human from the sky? From physique, it appears to be a man. I can't see his face because his head is facing the other way. Is he... He isn't dead, right? Mm, uh. The man moans and stands up. He's alive. I'm relieved, but soon I find myself frozen in place again. He doesn't have a face? No, that's not it. He's wearing a gas mask. What? Who sees someone wearing a gas mask and is like, that person doesn't have a face? Oh wait, no, actually it's just a mask. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> oh, that surprised me. Oops. The man scratches his hair and looks around frantically. He seems to be fine, but isn't he injured or anything? And why is he wearing a mask? Falling down from above is really weird, and no matter how you look at him, he seems obviously suspicious. As I stand petrified, the gas mask guy turns and faces towards me. I reflexively stop blinking and breathing. Don't come over here. Please ignore me and go somewhere else. But wishing that was futile, and the gas mask guy briskly approaches me. Master, I'm okay. Huh? Master? I heard Master's voice, so I came. What's this guy talking about? Is something wrong? 
N no um I think you're mistaking me for someone else. Mistaking you for someone else? Uh, I'm not anyone's master. No, master is master. N no, you're wrong. I don't even know you, and I'm not into I'm not into domination. Okay, this isn't this isn't my magical demon lover. You're not Karn. I'm not Karn. That's not true. I'm clear. The one who carried you here yesterday. Aw, oh, dang, I missed the... I missed the voice screaming clear at me. And yeah, I don't think you can go back for those. Damn. Oops. Ye yesterday now that you mention it... After being in Rhyme, I woke up lying here for some reason. Wait! Were you the one who pulled me into Rhyme? Can I selectively choose to just allow that voice to say the say shit? I don't think I can. Um, or maybe he counts as others. So maybe if I did do that, I just turn these ones off. I don't know. We'll see if that works. We'll have to wait until we meet a new character, though. That rabbit head had his face covered, and I felt like his clothes were similar, too. No. I mean... No, that was not me! But I thought that Master was Master, and I carried you here. His story doesn't quite make sense. I heard Master's voice yesterday. Destruction and death. What? I've heard that somewhere. Why do you know those words? G gah! What the fuck? Suddenly, the gas mask guy takes hold of both my cheeks and pulls them right and left. Uh, ow! That hurts! Master seems different from yesterday. It's hard to explain what, but if I had to say something, I remember your face and voice being scruffier. While pinching my cheeks, the gas mask guy keeps turning my head. Who is this guy? It hurts! Let go! Okay. The gas mask guy quickly releases his hands. Damn, that hurt. What's up with this guy? He pinched my cheeks without holding back, and now it stings. While I rub my cheeks with watery eyes, the gas mask guy tilts his head. I'll ask again, but you really are a master, right? I already told you I'm not. I don't think that's the case. I stand si silently irritated and take a deep breath in order to calm myself. Calm down. If you let him get to you, it's just what he wants. If this guy really is the rabbit head guy from yesterday, I have to catch him and question him. He seems like an idiot now, but if he gets angry, won't his true nature come out? I can't do it in rhyme, but if this becomes a fight in the real world, I'll manage somehow. I'll just try irritating him a little. <laughs> hey! As soon as I finish my yell, I throw a kick at the man's behind. Ah! Ah! So that's that's how we irritate people? We just fucking start attacking them? The gas mask guy leans back and holds his buttocks with both hands. P please master, stop it! What? what The gas mask guy sinks to the floor. Please stop, master. I can't break any more than this. Y yeah this guy isn't him. Definitely not him. I'll just quickly finish up here and return to work. Anyway, I'm not your master. I have to do some work, so I'm going back. Bye. Sorry I fucking... <laughs> Sorry I fucking kicked you in the ass and knocked you down to the ground. My bad. What should I do? Go home. Understood. The gas mask guy nods obediently and digs through his pocket with his right hand. What he takes out is... Oh, a vinyl umbrella. Hmm. Let me save. Alright. Let's save. Um, I have no idea what choice would even get me with clear, but I think I do want to pick noise. Um, so, but either way, I'm going to end the episode here, guys. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.